Hi, I'm Dana Marie, and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how I made a farm selfie quilt. Let's get started. Here are some of the tools that you'll need. Obviously the farm selfies panel and the coordinating yardage for the backing. I use some stripe fabric for the first sashing, but you can use whatever you have in your collection. Borders 1 and 2 are the same fabric. And then the checkerboard bordered is made out of 10 different fabrics. It doesn't have to be 10. It can be any amount you want. 10 just happens to work when I use a one inch strip of 10 different fabrics and sewn together, as you'll see later, it goes completely around the little quilt. Obviously some binding and some batting and all the tools you need. You can get a lot of these supplies, including the farm selfie fabric at the sewingplace.com. Fabric. Wow. I do have to confess that I don't always pre-wash my fabrics. The only time I really do is when I know it has a lot of shrinkage or it's prone to dye runoff, like those reds and purples. Either one of these usually have me looking for another choice, but sometimes it's what you have. So use what you've got or take the time to pre-wash and pre-treat your fabrics. I am a big proponent of using high quality goods, so from start to finish my project always turns out great. If you've got something in your stash and you're just not sure when you got it, where you got it, or what it actually is, in that case definitely pre-wash and pre-test. So I'm going to take my selfie panel first and I'm going to iron it flat make sure all the creases and everything are out and then I'm going to trim the panel evenly. I chose to lay my ruler 5 8 of an inch away from that outside framing border of each of those pictures. That was what I used as a guide for cutting. You don't want to go any less than about a half an inch because then when you stitch your first sashing border on you'll end up cutting into those great pictures. Alright, so my first sashing border I used the stripe fabric. I cut four strips 7 8 of an inch wide and then I stitched them using a quarter inch seam right sides together and I usually start with the long outside panels so I'll stitch and then I press the sashing outwards and then do the top and bottom pressing outwards. Now for my border fabric, I'm going to cut four strips two inches wide by the width of the fabric. Same method, quarter inch seam, right sides together, stitch to that striped border, press outwards. Stitch at top and bottom, press outwards. This is what I call border one. This is one of my favorite ways to add a pop of color. It's making a checkerboard border. So from my 10 different fabrics, I cut one strip each, one inch wide by the 44 inch width of the fabric. Now if you're using fat quarters, you'll need to do two strips each of 10 different fabrics. One inch by 22, the long side of your fat quarter. Or if you're using something out of your stash and it's not a full width of fabric, just cut enough one inch strips so that you can piece them together. Arrange them in a pleasing sequence. I kind of like to mix the colors around, make sure I don't have two browns next to each other, two reds next to each other, just mix it up. And then with a quarter inch seam, I'm going to stitch all those strips together. That's step one. Step two, I just cut that long length in half and then I sew those ends together. Step three, sew and cut sections together. I'm just going to lather, rinse, and repeat and keep reducing down until I can cut a long one inch wide strip from that fabric. I stitch these together on the short ends to one, make one long continuous piece strip so I can use that to sew around my quilt. Now you're going to add that checkerboard strip that you just made to border one. Using a quarter inch seam, right sides together, stitch first to the long edges of the panel and then press outwards. Now you'll find because of all the bulk in that checkerboard border and all those little quarter inch seams that that seam allowance wants to automatically fold towards the border one. 
that's okay. Just let it do that. It's easier if you try not to force a bulky seam to go against the way it wants to go. Stitch the strips again to the top and the bottom and press outwards. Again from your border fabric, now I'm going to cut four strips one and a half inch wide by the width. Same method, quarter inch seam, stitch first to the long outside edges of the panel, and then again top and bottom. Now what you might find as your little quilt starts to grow and become bigger in size is you might want to start stitching those strips together and make a one long continuous strip to sew around because you're going to get to the point where now the 44 inch wide won't be wide enough to do all your fabric. Now you've just got to prepare to finish. I'm going to cut my backing fabric, my batting piece, and I'm going to cut my binding strips and I will piece those all together to form one long continuous piece. Then I'll layer the backing so remember to have the right side of the fabric facing down so you see that on the back side of your quilt. Then the batting and then your great piece top quilt over top it all. Pin those layers together and machine or hand quilt along the edges of the pictures and sashing borders. I just I definitely went around each of the pictures and then I just straight stitched along all the satin sashing strips. You can choose to quilt as much or as little as you like. You need to quilt enough to hold your quilt together. Machine base close to the outside edge and then trim any uneven bits. Binding. Here it comes. Now there is a great free download that, called the ins and outs of binding that you can get free by clicking the link or going to danamarie.com and on the slide you can just click there and request that free download. It's full of great tips for many types of finishes and all kinds of binding and it comes in really handy when you need to make binding on a quilt or a garment. I add the binding by sewing the wrong side to the si sewing the right side of the binding, excuse me, to the wrong side of the quilt in a quarter inch seam. Now you can watch this short video to see how I handle the corners. I'm stitching along in a quarter inch seam. When I get a quarter of inch away from the end, I'll put my needle down, pivot, and then watch this. I will sew right off the corner. By sewing off the corner like that instead of stopping and back stitching, I am anchoring that miter down and it makes a great crisp corner. Fold your strip up and then back down and continue stitching along the edge in a quarter inch seam. Now you want to press the binding outward away from the qu quilt and then you can wrap the binding around to the right side folding under the raw edge so it just covers the stitching. Now here's a trick that I learned from the Mennonite and Amish ladies who make those beautiful quilts. Instead of pre-pressing that folded edge, which we do a lot of the time, they leave it a raw edge and when they wrap around they fold that under using their fingers and their needle often so that it just covers the stitching. By not pre-pressing they can assure that it it's always looks perfectly straight. Sometimes when you pre-press it and then you wrap it around it's not quite right and the sometimes the binding is kind of you know thick and thin looking. So that's just a neat trick and I've been doing that a lot lately. Works great. If your fabric is nice and crisp like most cottons it's a piece of cake. Then I top stitch in place. I don't do a whole lot of hand sewing. I like the machine sewn look of a binding. Now you have a finished farm selfie quilt. It's fun. It makes me giggle. I loved this fabric when I first saw it. Those are just some silly creatures. And it fits perfectly in our new social media world. I hope you enjoyed making a farm selfie quilt. 
Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. If you have any questions or would like to leave feedback, you can email me at info at I really appreciate it, and thanks for your time.